Hi, I'm Eric Naso, and I want to share with you a product that really helped me out a lot. It's called the Monfrotto Fig Rig. Now, I picked up this stabilizer because I had a, a series of shoots that required me to shoot at an angle, kind of like this, almost, you know, at, at a profile angle of, of the talent. Now, if the talent's walking forward and they have their head turned to me, almost like I'm walking with them in a conversation. Uh, I'd be like that second person, that person that they, they were talking to, and then walking forward. That would be a tough shot to get off the shoulder. Um, I think that shot would probably be uh, best achieved with a steady cam, but the budget didn't have that in it. it we couldn't get a steady cam operator. I'm not a steady cam operator. Uh, I've never used the smaller, lighter versions either. So that would have been tough, and I'd have to rent one and figure that out. But <laughs> uh, time was running out. I really needed to figure out how I was going to shoot this. So I found uh, the fig rig. Now, I didn't really find the fig rig like two days before the shoot. Uh, I found out about a fig rig years ago. I mean, they've been around for quite a while. Uh, but I saw the fig rig being used in a movie called The Raid. And it was uh, the behind the scenes footage on YouTube that sold me. The way they used this rig with an AF100, they had an external recorder, they had cinema lenses, primes on there, and those are heavy, those are not light lenses had their external monitor, they had the whole setup really heavy, and they pulled off some amazing shots with the rig. So I figured, well, you know what, if they could shoot a motion picture with this rig and a heavier camera, I should be just fine with the rig. So I decided to go with a little bit of a lighter package. I decided to use Lumix lenses and not cinema lenses. Um, I have some cinema lenses and I love them, the PL glass, but again, I just wanted to go lighter. You know, I, these lenses are really sharp. So uh, I used the Lumix Pancake 20 millimeter, which is a really sharp lens. And then I also used the 1235 on two other shoots. I didn't have the 1235, it's a brand new lens, just came out. So it wasn't available to me until really, literally the second uh, shoot I had with it, it, it came in mail. So I didn't have it, but it worked really well for the other two spots. So. Why did I configure it the way I did? Well, the, this is what I used. I used this, um, this is a start and stop, basically. It's a controller, but it's made for a DVX and a Canon camera. It's made by Bebop. Bebop, I guess that's how you say it. Um, and I just used it as a tally, because that's the only thing that it would work. It's got a link cable. So I, I plugged it into the SS. I think it's start and stop. I'm not sure what that stands for but it's a link uh, connection and all it would work for is tally. Didn't work for the push to focus, which would have been fantastic, but it did not, does not function that way. I, I also wanted to use the native lenses because focusing would be easier with start and stop. I've had some pretty good experiences using start and stop. So, uh, I mean, push to focus, sorry. Uh, you put the camera, the, the AF100 in manual, uh, autofocus, and then, um, push the iris button, that's iris and uh, manual focus or autofocus button. You, uh, you, you, ju you take the function button and you put the, nice, the focus point, which is like a little square box, anywhere on the scene, and then you push the button, let it go, it hunts for a few seconds, and then it locks into a manual focus mode once it hits or achieves your focus. And uh, that's a great feature. It works really well with the Lumix lenses that I own. I haven't tried them with a lot of Lumix lenses. Um, I noticed that the 1235 actually locked faster than the Lumix um, 20 did. So it has a better, I think it's got a little bit better uh, uh, feature built into that lens. But um, as far as lenses goes, yeah, that worked really well. And the controller was really, really great for auto, uh, you know, start and stop. Uh, the first day I got it, well, let me back. I ordered this thing two days before the shoot. And I got it the night before. I overnighted it from Amazon. Um, yeah, I kind of procrastinated a little bit. But uh, I really felt like, I, you know, I didn't have a solution yet. I really felt like this was going to work really well. So I had a lot of confidence in it, even though it took me forever to make a decision. Uh, when I got it, I put the, my, you know, what I felt what I needed on the, on the rig, and I was testing it out, and I just felt like how fluid it was. I was just sold. So I had a lot of confidence going in on the shoot, but I didn't think about it the first day, like, oh, well, how are you gonna record? You know, when you're, how are you gonna autofocus? How are you gonna focus? So I struggled a little bit more on the first day than I did than the second day. Everything got really fluid as, uh, uh, as I progressed through the shoot. So now I got a really great 
you know, system with it. So uh, those are the risks you take, you know, when you get new equipment the day before a shoot. But, uh, you know, it was the first time out, I was not using push to focus. I was holding the rig up at the level and then grabbing the lens, looking at the viewfinder, you know, looking at the LCD screen, making sure I was focused and then bringing it over here, pushing record, holding it like, it was crazy. So having the push to focus, letting go, because you don't have to hold it, you know, right? You just push to focus and it locks. Once it locks, I press record and I was off and running. So this little setup worked great. I think that there is a Panasonic controller because I see that there's an input for one on the camera. That is something I need to look into because I would love to have push to focus. Uh, I would love to have that and uh, the tally on one device. That would be fantastic. So here's how I rigged it out. I have a small HD DP6 with the uh, small HD batteries, which I highly recommend. These things are fantastic. They last a long, long time and they're lightweight and they're slim. They fit perfect on the, on the uh, LCD uh, monitor, so I love that. Um, then I used my uh, Rocket Fish, love these. These are my little skinny HDMI cables. And, uh, and that's pretty much it. You know, the Noga arm, small one, is holding the monitor onto the uh, quarter 20 tap. There's also two more taps, but they're not quarter 20, they're a little bit bigger. And that's pretty much it. Uh, everything comes with the rig. Oh, forgot to mention, there is a quick release. It's a Monfredo quick release. This is the same size you would find on a lot of the, the, their heads. Um, I put a larger one on here because I, I use the larger, uh, longer Monfredo quick release plate. But you know, you don't. I didn't. You don't really need that. As a matter of fact, I'm, I'm even thinking about going back to the smaller one because I think it, it works just fine. I have the tilt to base plate. And that doesn't require anything special. It actually works fine for both. So uh, that's why I, sw I swapped this out because this, this is a little bit wider model of uh, quick release base, uh, camera plate and base plate. But uh, yeah, not necessary really. So that's pretty much it. It works fantastic. You don't, you know, it just takes the jitters out. You know, it really takes the jitter out. It takes the, the motion, the bounce, but it keeps that looking handheld look, you know. The one thing that I noticed you really have to pay attention to is your horizon. When you're moving, just make sure your horizon is money, and that's, that's really the only serious uh, thing you got to watch out for because it's really fluid. Uh, one thing I didn't like, it's so minor, it's, this, it's these clips. These clips hold the uh, cables, if you have them, uh, you know, out of the way. They're, I already lost one. It came with four, and now i got three. So, they don't really hold much, actually. I, I can't even imagine what kind of other cable, a mic cable would be uh, way too fat for it to hold. The slot is perfect. Ironically, it's perfect for the HDMI, the skinny HDMI cable, but I can't imagine any other cable uh, fitting in there. So not really sure about the design of that, um, but I'm, you know, Velcro, uh, like cable ties, or shoot, just even some gaffer's tape, you know, just stick it on there. That would be, uh, that would be fine. So, but uh, you know what? It, it works really great. I, I have no complaints. It's just solid, uh, lightweight, holds the camera, and, and it does what it's supposed to do. And that's, and that's stabilize the camera, moving the camera around so it looks a little more floaty, but uh, it doesn't bounce around. So if you have a need to stabilize your camera when you're walking and moving around, even like going around subjects like that, uh, simple stuff would, this makes a huge difference. Just, uh, just a great, a great tool. Nothing fancy, but it doesn't have to be fancy to work, right? Just as long as it works. And it works really well. It's, this is the Monfrotto Fig Rig.